How you doing guys? Uh, we're group number 20 and uh, we're going to talk about this break design. Our group is composed by Miguel Verdia, Alex Rosales and myself Camilo Trujillo. We're going to talk about some history, materials, how actually the disc break works, uh, what kind of disc breaks we have and we're going to follow up with the conclusion. Uh, the, um, for the history, um, the first uh, the first uh, disc break design was done in England by a gentleman called Frederick William Lanchester in 1890s. Um, his design, um, for the, because of the lack of uh, materials and the roughness of the of the roads, um, he wa his design wasn't really it was really unreliable and um, it, it didn't appear again until 50 years later in um, in a company called Crosley, Crosley Hudson in 1949 used uh, his design, but later on they were forced to close due to the 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 unreliable unreliability of their uh, car designs. Um, Dunlop developed the first actual successful uh, design of for the disc brakes and they put it into the racing industry featuring cars like the Jaguar C-Type and the Citroen DS. Actually the first um, road car that uh, featured the, um, the front the disc brakes it was the Truum TR, um, TR3 um, in 1961, the first German car that featured the disc brake design, it was the Mercedes-Benz 220 SE. Um, later on, in 1965, uh, the, the design got to America, and it was featured in, in uh, vehicles like the Ford Thunderbird, uh, Lincoln Continental, and the Chevrolet Corvette, Com Corvette Stingray. Although uh, the design for the disc brakes, it was in, um, it was designed in the in the late 1800s. It wasn't really uh, became really popular until the 1950s because of the um, the racing industry because they need uh, the the uh, they need uh, the stopping power because of the high velocity of the vehicles. Some of the materials that um, that they're used um, is the, the most common one is cast iron. Um, a disadvantage from the cast iron is uh, its density. Due to its density, it consumes a lot of fuel, but in the other hand, it's really cheap and is the material that um, most of the most of the companies use to produce um, to produce um, a stock for the for the braking uh, braking uh, for the braking uh, for the braking. Uh, for the braking systems, um, we is the iron cast is not only the is is not the only material that um, we use to produce um, brake um, brake discs. We also have titanium alloys. Titanium alloys has a great quality. They're they're light. They dissipate the, the heat a lot better. But a really drawback for the system, they're uh, compared to iron cast, they're super expensive and uh, is actually not not a really good uh, good application. We have uh, another material which aluminum base uh, with uh, aluminum base uh, ceramic with ceramic particles. Um, they have a great advantage which is uh, they have a low density. They dissipate the heat a lot better but due to the, the friction, the lack of friction from the aluminum, they have the tendency of wear the pads a lot faster. Then they, um, they start adding uh, silicon carbide to the aluminum but the the drawback to this to adding silicon carbide to the system is that the the lack of um the lack of um the the lack of um kind of lubricant to the to the to the system makes the pad um actually slip and don't have a uh, really good efficiency. Uh, next, we're going to talk about uh, how the system works, and Alex Rosal is going to give you uh, is going to give you some some. So, how does it work? This brake consists of a main rotary disc, usually made of cast iron, that is pinned attached to the wheel. Two brake pads are located to each side of the rotor. A piston that you can see here in the piston is activated by a hydraulic system. This piston, this piston generate, generates a friction force that it will, it will oppose to the movement of the car and also to oppose to the movement of the wheel. The higher is the friction force, a greater stopping power. Different applications 
uh, will demand different design parameters to, from the design. There are many different uh, kinds of variation that we can add to the displays to increase the performance and to increase the efficiency and also to increase the topic power in a car. Uh, the first variation that we'll talk is the vented disc. Vented, vented disc brakes are uh, basically it are the composition of two tracks separated by channels inside. Those channels are previously uh, designed, previously designed to increase uh, the efficiency of the braking system, allowing the air go through the go through the to the rotor in order to uh, uh, um, lower the the air temperature inside and the temperature of the rotor. Uh, if you uh, work in this, you can also increase the efficiency of the braking power. Um, Miguel will explain you a little bit better another variation to, uh, in order to, to, to increase the performance of this brake system in cars. The second variation that we have for disc brakes is the drill disc brake. And the drill brick, as the name says it, is basically a, what we do is drill uh, holes through the disc brick to allow for uh, faster dissipation by increasing the convection uh, of the disc brake with the air. This uh, type of uh, variation was actually created during the 50s, as Camilo uh, first pointed out, because uh, there was a situation with early uh, pads that were made of asbestos that they created a gas uh, in the surface between the disc brake and the pads and this gas uh, created a condition in which the disc brakes uh, would not actually touch the pad because of a gas, uh, gas being trapped between them, and it highly affected the, the braking power of the pad. Uh, one of the advantages of drill, of, of the drill uh, variation, is that for the same reason that they used it on the 50s to, to allow for the dissipation of the gas between the, through the holes, uh, if this patch were to, if this, if this, sorry, if were to get wet, uh, the same concept would apply, and they would like be safe even even to wet conditions. The next variation is uh, slotted disc brakes. This is basically a uh, grooves that are carved into the surface of the disc, and these grooves are basically uh, there to uh, accumulate and expose the waste material from the pads uh, that's created between the friction of the disc and the, and the pads. Uh, the advantage, the great advantage of this, of this is that it keeps the area of, of breaking, of breaking, the, the breaking surface, the breaking contact surface between the disc and the, and the pad, clean. So it highly improves the actual surface area in contact with the with the pad. Uh, now we could go to the conclusion. Okay, in conclusion, uh, we need to understand uh, from all three variations is that uh, the all bring advantages to the system, you could combine all of them, you could combine two of them, you could mix and match to different degrees, but we need to understand that they all bring drawbacks. And the drawbacks, the main drawbacks that we could, we could uh, see from all of these uh, variations is that they affect the structure of the disc brake, creating an array of problems in depending on the degree that they're used. Uh, on the design concept, uh, we, we did this project uh, basically to explain and to, to shine, uh, shine a little light on the history of, of, of this of disc brakes. Uh, we need to understand that uh, disc brakes are done with safety as a number one priority. So uh, any design that's done for the disc brakes needs to understand the actual purpose uh, for which it's been created. Uh, but never, never forgetting that disc brakes are part of an equipment that is the first and last response to the operating vehicle, and is a great safety concern to, to any moving vehicle, basically. Uh, the design of the disc brakes is a very simple, simple design. Uh, there's really not a lot of moving parts to it, and it's a great design because it has, uh, basically since the 1960s uh, or early, uh, early 50s, has uh, stood the test of time, and we don't really see an end to it. Uh, so, this concludes our, our project, this is group, uh, group 20, thank you.